Jess. Um, I thought that I would do this kind of a um, style pick a card. I was gonna go live, but um, I am actually, we're getting ready to move, and so we're waiting for like the lady to come to do this apartment walkthrough. And I've just kind of been sitting here and I thought I might as well do a reading. And I've been thinking a lot about loneliness in the time of the pandemic, and so I just thought maybe it would be nice to see a human face. Um, anyways, I just thought that we could do a reading on what, like just what does spirit want to draw your attention to and why, what could be blocking you, that kind of just a general reading. So I have three piles. I'll probably edit the piles in, but pile number one, pile number two, and pile number three. Okay. I feel like I didn't leave that up for very long. That's just the right of way. Okay. Um, all right. So. Pile number one. Let's see. Um, and actually... I'm gonna read you a verse in the Tao Te Ching. I'm gonna like just open it to a random verse and see like what it has to say. So, let's see, let's see here. Okay, I got pile number one. What do you wanna say to them? What they pay attention to? I'm probably like bouncing you guys all over the place. So I'm, I'm going to read a verse from the Tao in just a second, but like this message is kind of coming through so strong that I wanted to just go ahead and, and say it, like get it out there. Um, by the way, my skin is looking really bad. It's just because I've been really stressed out. So um, please forgive that. But um, one thing that I would just want to point out is nepotism. Some of you guys have had a real big letdown, especially in the workplace, I feel like, um, or just some kind of a social group. But I'm really getting like with your like just in a sense of an opportunity. There was something that you really put yourself out there for. It didn't end up working out. And the reason that it didn't is because of like a girls or a boys club that, um, you know, it's, it's all about like just relationships and forming relationships is kind of what I want to say. So some of you guys might feel that you're really, really skilled um, and it's not that you're disliked. It's just that maybe this is um, like it wants to draw your attention to having relationships, building relationships with the people that could get you some kind of um, some kind of a promotion. Now, there's probably a reason that you don't want to do that, and that's probably because of the Ten of Swords, because these people um, have betrayed you in the past. So it's not really authentic, you know, for you to want to get um, to get their attention or to be you know, to, to foster a relationship with them. So I wanted to read the Tao verse like before I got started. So let me just, okay, we got verse 26. I keep wanting to like, but I won't. Okay, the inner foundation of the outer is still, wait, no, 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 starting over. The inner is foundation of the outer. The still is master of the restless. The sage travels all day, yet never leaves his inner treasure. Though the views are captivating and beg attention, he remains calm and uninvolved. Tell me, does the lord of a great empire go out begging for rice? One who seeks his treasure in the outer world is cut off from his own roots. Without roots, he becomes restless. Being restless, in his, being restless his mind is weak. And with a mind such as this, he loses all command below heaven. Yeah. Um... I feel like you guys are very like proud people, but like in the best way, in like a sagely way, you have strong morals. Maybe you do have a lot of sun or Saturn in your chart um, and you are pretty straightforward. You're pretty straight up. Like you're a very authentic person. I feel like you've been thinking a lot about um, these people who are in your, supposedly in your friend group. I feel like it's people that you like see every day that are definitely a part of your, of your landscape. Now, I think that it's um, causing you to some of you guys are Leos because I'm just thinking about um, the Leo readings that I, before I switch over to doing the nakshatras, like the Leo readings that I was getting, 
um, they were all about betrayal and feeling overlooked and feeling seen but it, it kept coming out that like in the end it was all because it wanted to push you down a path of independence right like completely some kind of a sun endeavor and I feel like that is what it's like this betrayal is um, blocking your creativity and your sense of strength and sense of pride I feel like something really rocked you where you were like um, my brain was like started singing we will rock you because i'm a gemini and that's what goes on in here um in western i'm a gemini but um yeah so i feel like it's blocking this opportunity that does want to come in and it's like completely um it's an exciting new opportunity that might catch you out of the bag but like also I always see this cat just ruminating on these fish like you're waiting for an opportunity you're just waiting and waiting and waiting um but I feel like there's something about it that's like in trying to inspire you to realize that there's actions you can take in your own life like possibly starting some kind of new business for yourself you know that you might not even be um realizing because I get a strong sense of creativity a strong sense of just strength like I feel like and listen I would be lying if I said that I wasn't haven't been in this position myself um this it's like you guys are really strong leaders in this pile and you're really bright lights like people really do like to like they trust what you have to say that kind of thing and so it's, it's threatening possibly to people in charge to put somebody like that maybe they want like a yes person um and so i feel like it's drawing your attention to the fact that there's like a girls or a boys club um around that and that's the way that they're making these kind of decisions because what's blocking you is the four of wands now fours are deal with structure and stability with the four of wands and also the six of cups here i feel like it's i feel like it's it's almost saying like favorites you know people that have family ties that's why i keep kept wanting to say nepotism um so it's like you're thinking whether or not you want to keep investing your time or energy in this certain place now the advice is the queen of cups like i think it's telling you to just pull back um don't show any emotion um about about this like have a lot of emotions this is how you're going to jump start your creativity that's kind of what i feel like this is about it's like just pulling back and starting to nurture that because we have the star at the bottom of the deck as well now i kept getting a leo vibe or a sun vibe just a reminder that the sun rules the nakshatras at the end of the fire sign so airy leo sagittarius and it spills over into the beginning of the earth signs taurus virgo capricorn um so you could that's how you could be getting that sun energy you could have you know your sun prominent in your chart in the first house there's so many ways to get these planetary energies very strong in your chart so many of us are such a mix of so many things um but you know leo stands opposite the star you know um and i feel like oh and in vedic this is so um the star is the aquarius card and in vedic it's ruled by saturn saturn is about restrictions and delays so i feel like there is something about you standing apart from the group you naturally stand out um f apart from the group i think that's something you might need to be reminded about because just because people um have been overlooking you and overlooking your contributions you are a person who really does um like you can lead from the back do you know what i'm saying that's what this aquarian leadership is all about you are actually drawing in people um in your life that appreciate and value you and um, appreciate and value your contributions maybe you haven't talked to these people in a long time or they're like coming into your life um to remind you on the outside do you know what i'm saying because i feel like your advice here being the queen of cups is telling you to just you know first of all maybe like read romance novels read fiction right like read some fiction books get yourself into a, a new reality in a way that can um, start jump starting your creativity definitely do some art or something you know for yourself I feel like this is just like taking care of yourself also take a lot of baths you know um, there's water just really helps to clear your energy field like I just took a bath yesterday and I'm telling you I feel like a new woman um, so yeah I feel like that's also um, just like really sorry I thought there was gonna be a bee um, yeah there's I feel like it's trying to pull your energy in so that you can start to manifest and then once you've manifest to a certain point like there's going to be a wake-up call from the outside now it's not saying that like all you need to do is think happy thoughts and draw some pictures in a vision journal or anything like that there's going to be steps that you're going to naturally be in tune with um, 
like that you're gonna pull together from your creativity and also from your intuition if you take some time alone and if you take some time to heal and regenerate your energy i feel like you guys have been spending a lot of time maybe pouring over um applicant like application magazines magazines <laughs> application um postings <laughs> you know or something like that um but it's really just been draining your energy and um I feel like there's something that you're going to pick up on um, about this group that that you're involved with that's just not really serving you. So what, um, what, I'm sorry about all the noise, you guys, if you can hear that, but um, what Spirit wants to draw your attention to is the Three of Pentacles. So this is, again, it's community, right? Now, what's interesting, I'll never forget this from like a fifth grade science project because we had to build a tower that was going to hold a certain amount of textbooks and whoever structure held the most like one something and so i thought that like you know chairs and tables and stuff they have four legs that's like the most sturdiest structure it isn't three legs apparently is i'll never forget that that happened to me in like fifth grade i think about it all the time um i like side eye my chairs when i walk by I'm like why do you have four legs <laughs> no um so the three of pentacles this is also community but it's also this has to do with your sacred mission now i'm a person who believes that our sacred mission is um a lot of times super mundane okay and i talk about this a lot liz green in her book saturn um about saturn a new look at an old devil she talks a lot about saturn she talks a lot about earth signs and how they get this rep for being really boring um but actually um the birth like a lot of the, the the really big saints that we talk about and know about on a huge scale, they are attributed to earth signs, like they to the banner of earth, like they were born under an earth sign. So you have um, Buddha is attributed to Taurus, Mother Mary is attributed to Virgo, and Jesus is attributed to Capricorn, who's are the the example she uses in the book. And I talk about this a lot too with earth. Um, earth signs contain the fire planets as rulers of their nakshatras, and the reason that. Liz Green says and I completely agree with is because it's a really difficult test of the spiritual adept to be able to pull those energies down into the mundanity of earth. That's what I'm seeing here with the seven of cups and the three of pentacles is that you you're being drawn to remember your mission like keep your eye on the prize is what I'm seeing with this like little lady here looking at that gold star. Gold star. Some of you guys are trying to get a gold star you're trying to get like people's approval and it's just not happening so that's like that's a part of it there are people that are going to naturally appreciate it but the three of pentacles is something that you can build you know and this is the the meeting of community and spirit and the mundanity of spirit so there's this group has a sacred mission that you're very confused about okay because it doesn't have to look airy fairy like the seven of cups it doesn't have to look like neptune um it can look like something um weirdly practical okay especially like in our world where you know what it feels like to be overlooked like in some in this kind of an environment so even if it's just starting like i don't know vacuum cleaner business or something but like you treat your employees really well and you change the world in that way um it can be like super mundane but i feel like you guys are getting a lot of ideas and there's something here about like choices you have a lot of choices and I feel like you've been thinking about the wrong thing. Like maybe you've been driven by this betrayal or this unhappiness in where you are. And so you're just looking to grab any rope to get out of it. But, um, you know, it, that's what's causing you like some kind of confusion here. But with the three of pentacles, I feel like it's telling you, you have a mission. It's really, really solid. Um, and that's why it's saying, you know, just to really take care of yourself because those messages are, are going to be coming, are going to be coming through. So I just want to pull um, more cards. I, I've been really like digging this deck lately here. this is beautiful okay yeah so you guys I feel like a lot of you have been um, in lack mentality um, I know this is like lack mentality is such a phrase like in the spiritual world that um, it's easy to just like hear that and file it away you know as something broad but like really just sit with maybe what that means 
Um, so confront empowerment at the level of physical survival awakens the spiritual authority of humility, compassion, and self-esteem. Something has tanked your self-esteem here, but it's coming from the outside. Um, be in the world and not of the world is just something that I heard. Like whatever true value is, if you if you stick with that, because you guys are striking me as spiritual people as well. Um, you're really thinking about um, relationships, spirituality. You're trying to stay true to your values in some sense. And um, I feel like just where you're at, it's been really difficult to do that. So, um, you know, the thing that the blockage here, if we have addict helps you confront recognize and confront addictive behavior. And then the shadow attribute is compromises integrity and honesty allows an addictive pattern to have authority over your inner spirit. So there's some kind of pattern here around and around we go that, um, that just needs to really be broken. And I feel like it's, that's what has, there's a different way of looking at this where it's not you that's messed up. It's not you that's, that's bad or wrong. I'm hearing like a, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine hide it under a bushel. No. Um, sorry, that's my, uh, Bible belt upbringing coming through there. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, with the 10 of swords, like, I just feel like some people have like really attacked you and your character because you're such a bright light. And it's important that you understand that that's what's happening and to stay true to your principles. Um, I do feel like it's also telling you to be safe. Like you're not crazy. People have, um, really have tried to like take you down a peg or something, you know, because they're so threatened by you. Um, now, the way that you can confront that, we have the destroyer. Um, and this is really poetic because on the 12th, we have the Jupiter-Pluto conjunction. Um, Pluto ruling death, you know, and Jupiter is going to, Pluto is more death in the form of transformation, right? Than Saturn, that's hard endings. Now, I, I really, releasing what is potentially destructive, preparing for new life. There's something even at the form of thought, vibration, emotion, right? Because the way that um, we manifest, the way that we, our subconscious works is thought and emotion and repeat you know um i've been really like with this attachment book that we're doing like um for the book club um i've been looking a lot into this like subconscious reprogramming now your subconscious also doesn't hear words like i don't want this right it just hears this and then like you have an emotion and it imprints it. So be like, get really clear on what it is that you do want. Cause I feel like some of you guys are really like living from a place of fear and like, I ugh, like these people keep coming at me. I don't want it to happen, which is completely understandable. But I'm just saying like, I don't know if you look at it from the lens of, I feel like that's what it's telling you here is like subconscious reprogramming with the queen of cups. Um, of just getting being happy fostering that happiness is going to put you in a completely different vibration and i mean that in a very scientific way <laughs> um so um yeah with destroyer we have releasing what is potentially destructive now also with the shadow attribute here you guys intoxication with destructive power destroying others dreams and potential that's what i feel like you've been dealing with so I feel like you've got to just let go of that, even if it's energetically, even if it's just trying to please the wrong people. It's just calling, you know, calling the L and being like, you know what, I'm never going to um, be able to move up here because of the way that things are set up here. Um, so yeah, then we have the poet is like what wants to like come through. With the Queen of Cups, again, guys, I feel like this is calling your attention to the, you guys have been ruminating on something like just obsessing with something and it's like the way that you're thinking about it again with this subconscious reprogramming i feel like you're thinking a lot about like oh i don't want this and then you have a lot of emotion and it's programming your subconscious it's filling in these neural grooves so i feel like maybe that's just something and again it's like it's just a very scientific thing of like start thinking about what you do want start cultivating your inner passions take some um you know salt baths like you know or something like that where you can just just feel like you're cleansing your energy field um also like i'm just a lot of like art like enjoying art you know like i said fiction maybe actually poetry here with the poet so the light attribute expresses soul insights in symbolic language this symbolic language of the subconscious i feel like is being called up here for you guys and then the shadow attribute turns a lyric gift to a negative or destructive effect. This is what I feel like you guys have been dealing with. You have such a beautiful poetic soul. You're a natural leader. People have been intentionally misunderstanding you and it's put you in this beggar mentality, but you guys are visionaries. You're not meant to fit in. You're meant to stand out. And okay, there's something about um, selling your insights to the highest bidder. Yeah, shadow attribute. Selling insights to the highest bidder, compromising your vision to make it more acceptable, which is what 
the shackles of this group have been putting upon you. And um, that's why there's a new, like, there's a new thing that's trying to come in. Um, yeah, because you have the capacity to envision what is not yet conceivable to others and willingness to proclaim a vision without personal gain. Yeah. Yeah. So this flipped out. Athlete. Um, and it landed on the Queen of Cups. So maybe this is more, again, working out your body. And I was going to say that because sometimes with the Queen of um, Cups, I think about like our hormonal systems in the body. Because um, working out, I don't know if you guys find this, but like my... All, everyone in my family, literally, I'll be like, I've been feeling really down lately. And they're like, have you been working out? And I'm like, no. It's like so obvious with me that like when I work out, I um, I just feel so much better. And it's been really hard with the, um, the fires here. And I don't want to go to the little like community center gym with the virus. So um, maybe, yeah, definitely like definitely working out your body, I feel like will strengthen you emotionally. Um, also like, okay, light attributes, dedication to transcending physical limits, including handicaps, development of personal willpower and strength of spirit. I feel like that's what this has been all about. This little crucible. It's not little, this, um, crucible that you guys have been through, because listen, if you guys are visionaries, you know how visionaries are treated. They're not treated great. Um, also I'm seeing priest and scribe right here. And also pioneer you guys, I'm telling you, this is such visionary energy. It's crazy. You're here to bring a new vibe, a new, um, a new way into the world with child wounded you guys please get the book attached please um, because there's unconscious patterns here if you become aware of it um, you can um, you, you can reprogram your subconscious um, you really can and um, those of you who are on my patreon what the the person that I directed you to for more information talks a lot about that so um, let's see anything else I feel like that's all. Um, any final words here, Spirit? Yeah, I feel like you guys are, you feel very stuck and trapped, but okay, I'm also, cause I'm getting this with the Four of Cups. This very much reminds me of the Wheel of Samsara, like, everything is cause and effect. Okay. So there's really no escaping the wheel by just responding to the things in our life, like through consequence, you have to become aware of it. And once you become aware of it, that's when you step outside the wheel altogether. That's what ultimately spiritual liberation is, has been like trying to tell us. There's no, um, if you just want to go around and around in the wheel, you're just going to keep going around and around in the wheel. There's nothing wrong with that. You're, you're going to learn more every time, but you can escape that rat race by just stepping out of the wheel. And that's what I feel like I see. It's like whatever variables you guys have been considering, there is another way, um, a higher way, and it's you're going to have some kind of realization. So it's telling you, like the Tao Te Ching, I'm gonna read this one more time. Um, the inner is the foundation of the outer. The inner is the foundation of the outer, verse 26. Um, that's the first line. The inner is the foundation of the outer. The still is master of the restless. The sage travels all day, yet never leaves his inner treasure. Though the views are captivating and beg attention, though all of this is very captivating, it's pulling in your attention. So like it keeps wanting to pull your attention to something more creative. It's trying, it's it's from within. The queen of cups, like get, see how she's pregnant there? Um, it's from within, it's from within, okay? So also some of these people, I don't know, there's family and some kind of school or something. So I don't know if everybody's like, they went to the same school or, um, I just get a real nepotism vibe for what's been kind of holding you back here. Um, though the views are captivating and big attention, he remains calm and uninvolved. Just be uninvolved. Don't, don't worry about it. Cause, cause it's like, there's something about this energy that keeps telling you, you need to play the chess game. You need to worry about what these people think. And it's, it's telling you to be pleasant. You know, the, the queen of cups is nothing if not pleasant, nurturing, kind, wonderful, beautiful. Um, but it's also telling you to really throw your chips behind your spirituality and your spiritual beliefs and, um, and understanding that you really can change that energy from the inside out. Um, tell me, does the Lord of a great empire go out begging for rice? Now, this is why I'm getting sun energy because sun world people, they really don't give up on their morals or values all that easily. And I feel like you guys are wondering whether or not you need to play some kind of a game here and you don't, um, 
One who seeks his treasure in the outer world is cut off from his own roots. Without roots, he becomes restless. Being restless, his mind is weak. And with a mind such as this, he loses all command below heaven. So it's tempting to want to play this game and want to try to appease other people, to try to corrupt your vision in order to make it more palpable. Um, even if you do share really good ideas, you run the risk of being betrayed if somebody, you know, trying to, to say them, um, that they're, that those ideas were theirs. Um, so yeah, with the seven of cups, it's like, you don't really know what to do. You just know that you want to get away from whatever it is that you're in. And that is not a place of power from your subconscious mind, from that engine that's going to bring in, um, some kind of different vibration for you. Okay. Um, don't forget this child wounded, you guys, I feel like this is just a deep pattern. This is all bringing your awareness to some kind of deep pattern. Maybe this is to people, please. Um, or, or something like this. So you have a lot of options, um, in, in how to move forward, but I feel like, um, it's telling you, you can build it. If you build it, they will come. <laughs> um, look slave. I, I feel like I could keep pulling, pulling from here. Trickster. I feel like it's telling you to be a maverick, maverick Houdini your way out of this situation. Um, and just, just step outside of it. So that's what I have for you guys. Pile number one. If that resonated, please like comment and subscribe. Bye guys. want to draw your attention to and why okay so um i'm gonna probably be couching a lot of my interpretations and attachment theory for the time being it tends to work like that whenever i'm really reading about something i can see it very clearly in the cards now this pile might resonate with more of an avoidant style attachment where you're very strong nurturers caregivers you're very skilled at self-regulating and self-soothing and you have a lot to give to the world you guys might actually be in positions um, of power you might be in some kind of a leadership position or you're very strong healers and people recognize that avoidant types a lot of times become avoidant because they are such strong nurturers and they realize that people kind of just <gasps> latch on to that energy um and and you can feel like you know it's against your consent it's not against your um or it's not something that you're you're comfortable with and so over time you just learn to protect yourself by putting up a, a strong wall and i feel like that is what it's drawing your attention to now what is interesting here is that you guys actually have a lot of wisdom to share with the hermit card coming straight out you're very very wise it's telling you what it wants you to focus on. And this maybe does sound counterintuitive for people who are um, very spiritual and maybe have a very Aquarian mindset, Six of Pentacles. It's okay for you to give to a place of superiority, like give from a place of superiority. From the thing where you give, it's like you need to set like the tone and the boundaries. And that's not rude and it's not mean and it's not you being egotistical like here with the sun. It's just that you do have so much that you want to share. So the obstacle is the world. The obstacle could be the internet. It could be um, putting yourself out there in a way that you also feel protected and contained. Like see how... And usually the world has the naked dancer in the middle, right? Like she's so vulnerable and she's so open, but she also has to know that she's got that very strong, um, you know, some spiritual traditions would call it a magnetic field, um, but she has her boundaries. And notice it's just like, this looks like a hula hoop to me. Um, oh, this is the snake. Oh, no, sir. I, I don't remember his name, but um, the snake eating his own tail, paradox. So that's what I'm getting is that um there, it's a bit of a paradox here and if anybody if you dabble in spirituality you know when you hit that paradox you hit that juicy juicy goodness um that's not going to surprise like the hermits here um yeah so i feel like you guys you it's telling you that you have a lot of light to give look like this woman is glowing from the inside out she's like hovering you guys have a lot of wisdom that you want to share and i feel like either you are headed towards your victory and success the, whatever it is, it's like you're headed there through wisdom. You're also headed there because you can pick out, um, you're good with the details and you're also good with like, with your communication. 
but I feel like you're just protecting your own energy has been a, a really, it's a strong struggle. And again, like I mentioned this in pile number one with the Jupiter's um, Pluto conjunction that we have coming up on the 12th of this month, this is all about just taking your power back. And it's telling you that you aren't just like, you're not always a scruff. This also, um, getting Saturn here with the world. Okay. Yes. It's people who are Saturn dominant. They're always removing the log from their own eye. Um, whenever something goes wrong, they're quick to say, well, what did I do wrong? And I see that you guys have a very like self-reflective mind. Um, and it, in part, that's why you have cultivated this wisdom and why you have gained so much success. So, um, yeah, like you're, the blockage here is just learning how to set your boundaries, but like to be free and just like, um, comfortable with it, you know, and knowing that you're not trying to be like, put anybody in their place and everyone's below you. And like, you're this weird dictator. It's not saying that it's saying that we all have places where we give and we all have places where we receive and it's okay for you. And the places where you're giving this knowledge this is such beautiful energy. You guys, I don't know if you have um, a Virgo sun or if you have strong Mercury, um, you have a Mercury sun conjunction perhaps. Um, but this is somebody who does give a lot to their community, um, a lot of wisdom. This is somebody who's service oriented. And it's like, because you're so service oriented, you feel like you're always want to be in the place of the giver. Now that's something that avoid and attachers can do. Um, because it's a more comfortable place to be in. Okay. And so it's telling you, it wants you to actually focus on being okay in that place, you know, um, with sharing your wisdom and it's okay to, to do it in a way that's, that works for you. Okay. Um, what am I trying to say here? Yeah. Your advice is like just to celebrate and like to let yourself out of this cage. I feel like if you basically what I'm trying to say is I feel like if you can trust yourself to set your own boundaries, that's what, that's all this is, you know, cause a lot of times avoidant attachers, they're like, Oh, these people, they just keep swarming me for all my nurturing energy. Um, but it's like, it's okay. You know, and they want to nurture avoidant types love to nurture people. It's kind of their love language, you know, and then it gets to a point where it's really, it's getting to be more intimate. And then, um, and so they, they, that's when they're like, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. Uh, I want to nurture you, but like, I want to, uh, you know, also remain, independent in some way. So, um, I feel like there's a good balance to be had and that's what's trying to draw your attention to. I just realized I haven't even pulled the quote from the Tao Te Ching cause I want to do that at the beginning. So let me just, let me just rifle through here. All right. Okay, I kind of don't know which one to read here, but this is strong language. I feel like you guys, I feel like this might be the language that you pull away from, okay? So verse 59, rule the people and serve heaven. This is a leadership pile, okay? Rule the people and serve heaven, yet hold nothing more dear than the mother's harvest. Let every thought and every breath be the fruit of your offering. Do it now. Let her power run thick in your blood. You guys are afraid of your own power, pile number two. You're afraid of your own power, but let her power run thick in your blood. There will be no obstacle you cannot overcome, no limit you cannot surpass, no empire you cannot rule. Ah, but in all your glory, never lose sight of the mother. Without her, your empire will crumble, your power will waste away, for the mother brings the harvest. She alone causes things to endure. Okay, one thing that's coming through is like, if you have been exalted in something, like this sun energy, this is divine, this is healing. So if you've been exalted in something, it's like you've been exalted because of this, the mother, you know? Um, and it's like a sacred duty, like with the Saturn here, just like kind of viewing it as a sacred duty. And in order for you to fulfill that sacred duty, it's okay for you to have like kind of strong boundaries. I feel like it's wanting you to put yourself out there more. Cause some of you guys have like wanted to, you got a taste of success and then maybe, maybe this was on the internet and, um, you have so much juicy healing energy to give. You really, really do. Um, maybe people have been nitpicking you. Maybe people have been nitpicking you because of this success, because you're out in the front and it's like, so you're scared to open up and share certain things, but, and you don't have to share everything, but it is telling you that you've been, I want to say you've been anointed to give certain messages. This is very high vibrational messaging. You have Virgo, Mercury exalts here. And then you have Leo represented with the sun, which is the higher self of Gemini, the house of communication to our communities. So some of you guys are sitting here, you're questioning this. You're having some kind of maybe low self-esteem. You're wondering about your hidden enemies because, um, 
all you can see is hands here, like in this crowd, you know? So you can't see people's faces. You can't really read people's cues. And again, maybe hands like with the keyboard and then also hand, uh, Virgo hosta energy is ruled by the hand and it can be, it can be the chrome. It can be the very protective mother. Um, it's also, it is the nakshatra of witchcraft. Um, but it can also be of manipulation. So I feel like these might be themes for you guys. Back to this. We call this deep roots and a solid trunk, the way of long life and lasting insight. So there, now we're talking about the mother bringing the harvest. This is, that was uncomfortable for me to read. I don't know. Maybe you guys have a Leo North node um, or you have a North node in the first house, a fire house, like the first house, fifth house, or the ninth house, or you have it in Aries, Leo Sagittarius. I feel like you guys are actually supposed to be embracing your fire energy in this life, being charismatic, allowing yourself, because you have a lot to share, but I feel like you guys, you, you just protect yourself. So with the six of pentacles, um, you know, that's giving to multiple places, but you have to be able to give um, because the, the original, the guy, you know, like the guy in the six of pentacles, um, he only gives what is comfortable to give. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Excuse me. Excuse me. That card is all about, yeah, he gives whatever he's comfortable to give, right? And it doesn't actually take from him. That's what this message is. It's like give until, some of you guys are given until it hurts. And it's just, it's telling you, you know, that's not wise. So I feel like maybe some of you guys, it's been like a shift of extremes where um, it's like you're out there, you're giving it, you're feeling strong. And then everybody maybe piles on in one way or another. And then you have to pull back um, in order to protect yourself. And it's like kind of these, these swings, but it's telling you that you can put yourself out there in a way that is safe. Um, and that you should put yourself out there. If you guys are thinking about doing something on the internet, do do something on the internet um, because you have so much juicy healing energy to um, to give. And I feel like you guys are on your way to success. You might have a, 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 achieved some kind of success like already, but you're on your way to even like greater success. I feel like with the six of wands, the spotlight is on you. Embrace that. Have fun. You know, with the four of wands. You guys, the Four of Wands, a traditional meaning is um, like a city that's been under siege, finally opening, like finally being able to open up its gates to let all the supplies back in. Everybody gets to dance and have fun. So let down those walls. It's okay for you to let down those walls. Um, you don't have to just like completely withdraw because there's some kind of, I feel like you guys have had people in your past that um, were hidden enemies. And so it's like, there's something about your trust, but you know what? It's like, universe wants to get you in a place where you're big and you don't have to worry so much about that you know what I mean like it wants to bring you to your people and you know what some of you guys your people are on the internet like they're maybe it's not in your immediate community you guys could have son in the 11th house shout out um so you do like you connect to your people on the internet also with the sixth here the sixth house is the higher self of the ninth house you guys are sages, okay? And you have that, but it wants you to bring it out into the, like the sixth house of everyday activity, of building your everyday activities and of just being humble and giving, like just being simple servants, you know, and showing up every single day in whatever this is that you're doing. It wants to make that routine and consistent. And I feel like that is what is bringing you to um, this like North Node energy that you have, um, right? Because you have all of this wisdom and it's like the universe wants to, I'm seeing someone like try to stick a straw in the coconut. <laughs> like the universe just wants to get all that juicy nutrients out, like get people hydrated again. I don't know. Um, yeah, so it's okay for you to give from this place where you give from that place of superiority, where you set the boundaries that you need to set and you don't give until it hurts. You give the of the excess, you know, and with the six of pentacles, another thing that's often commented on in that card is like, um, that is a very stable relationship because people will naturally find I, all of us. We have, like I said, at the beginning of this reading, we have places where we're leaders and then we have places where we give. And in that way, we're all equal. It's not that like, um, everybody's equal and every subject under the sun, like, you know, um, we all have the places where we we are qualified to be the givers. And then we all have the places we go in order to receive from someone, from someone else, you know, and I'm getting healthcare, like with the, the hermit. So you guys have a lot to give and it's okay for you to step out into the spotlight and give and own your space and be like, I know what I'm talking about, <laughs> you know, with this stuff. Um, it's okay for you to be a leader. Um, why? Because you have the, the king of cups. You guys have, you, first of all, I think you might be a little uncomfortable with your leadership position. 
a little uncomfortable because you're sweeties. You really are. And you guys are all about doing the work. But you know what? I feel like in the age of Aquarius, as we're making the shift, it's like people who are like, okay, I'm just going to talk about my Western chart for a second. It's really weird because I have a Leo rising. But, um, and then so I have Aquarius on the descendant, you know, where I'm like, that's what I feel most comfortable in, you know. And then I have an Aries North node and I have Libra, you know, where I'm like, I just want to be diplomatic. I want everybody to have their place, you know, and I'm, I'm ready to make a compromise, you know, but I'm supposed to be leaning into this fire energy. I can relate to this pile. I can relate to pile number one too. <laughs> um, but, um. Yeah, I feel like this is like some of you guys are just uncomfortable being like, I'm here. It's me. I have a place, you know, um, but it's wanting to pull those people who are the bookworms, the book nerds, the people who really have worked hard to cultivate their wisdom and who are simple servants, simple, hum humble servants. Um, and understanding that like it is the mother that has given you that um, because with the King of Cups, like I said, I feel like a lot of you guys, you're intuitive. It's all get out. Um, you're very loving, you're very spiritual, but you kind of keep it to yourself, you know? Um, and some of you guys really don't like being picked apart. You know, you just, you want to be, you want to be yourself. You want that to be okay. You want to find your people. And it, it's a little bit of a pruning process a little bit. So I also wanted to read this other verse here because I didn't know really which one I do feel like it. So that was verse 59. If you guys want to like mark that or read that or make that a part of your meditation. Um, the verse 60, we have govern a nation as you would fry a small fish. Okay. When Tao is present in the empire, dark spirits lose their power. You guys, you guys. It's not that they have no power. It's that their power can't harm anyone. I'm going to cry. When Tao is present, the people enjoy the blessings of heaven. They find unity. They find peace. What's this about spirits doing harm? The sage is approaching and they are rushing in to sweep his path. You are the sage, pile number two. You are vibration changers, you're game changers. If you step up into the position that you are supposed to, it's the, the information, the wisdom that you're going to share makes people immune to the, these dark spirits. When Tao is present in the empire, dark spirits lose their power. You know, there's that quote that's like, all that's required for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing. Literally, all you have to do is step up. And hold your mantle. This is also your karma. You're, you're working on your karma. Um, some of you guys have sun conjunct Saturn. Or you have sun in Aquarius. You have sun in uh, Capricorn. You have some kind of sun Saturn contact. Where that Saturn is. Um, has been restricting your sun. I feel like that actually was great for you. Because you were building up your wisdom in the past. But Saturn. It, towards your mid 30s starts to lift. So um some of you guys might be going through a Saturn return. Some of you guys, your Saturn's maturing. Um, and you're going to be released from this. Because, and, and again, this all is to serve a purpose. It's fulfilling some kind of karma. You deciding to step out of the shadows. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I think I sang that in pile one too. Can't remember if it was this one already. But yeah, it's telling you to just trust, trust that you're finding your people, you guys. Um, some of you guys, if you haven't found your people in your immediate space, if you're thinking about doing something online, your people are all around the world, okay? The spiritual tribe that everybody always talks about, you guys, we're sprinkled across the world because we're supposed to change the whole world. It's not like, you know, we're all going to hang out in, like, Detroit, <laughs> you know, because that's the one place. No, like, it's, there's a giant bee in here, so if I run, just know. I'll take that. Um... Yeah, like it's, we're everywhere. And so the internet, I feel like is a strong place. It can be a strong place for very spiritual people. So let me just pull a little more cards and then we'll almost be done here. I wonder what time it is because we used to have somebody stopping by. You guys are leaders. This this pile, you guys are the sweetest leaders ever. You're like the the true alpha leaders. You know they say like alphas have the highest cortisol levels. Alphas are the ones that are like gonna deal with the issues. They're not the ones saying like, don't look at that. You know they care. They are, you know an alpha. This is a really side note. With the primates, like if there's ever a problem, his own mother, usually it's a he, um, their own mother. If their own mother is in a dispute with someone, they call it fair. They call it fair. 
that is this level. That's what you guys do. This is a very wise pile. So the blockage, interestingly enough, is God, your spirituality, your thoughts about what a spiritual person is. You guys, um, there are 12 houses in the Zodiac. You have 12 energies that you need to master. There are nine planets. You have nine of those traits that you need to embody in yourself. All of those are spiritual. Everything, it's best to not go to extremes with spirituality. Everything in, the, in its proper amount, in its proper place at the right time. This is the sage. You have to be able to draw upon. You want a strong, healthy Mars in your chart. Listen, Mars is how you fight. Mars is how you get what you want. It's okay to have that. Um, so your spirituality, I feel like there's certain tenets in spirituality where you're like, spiritual people are quiet, demure, they wear white. Look at me. I look the picture of a spiritual person. You know, um, I listen to Kate Tempest a lot. Um, she has a lot of like very poetic um, songs. She says, happiness, the brand, is not happiness. Well, spirituality, the brand, is not spirituality. Okay, just a, a brief, um, just to, to get this, okay, I grew up Christian, and I was prepared to be tested right when I became an adult. And I thought that was going to be someone in a Satan outfit with, like, nipple piercings coming in and trying to offer me, like, drugs. <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> that's what I was prepared for. But you guys, I was in a history of Christianity class. My entire faith like came crumbling down because I started to be faced with, um, you know, the people of my faith not really living up to the tenets of that faith. I'm gonna make. So you guys are being presented right now with some kind of a barrier to your own spirituality. Um, and the way that that is, it's blocking you. You guys are actually, it's so funny because, you know, this is your own journey here. So it's like confronting your own spiritual um, blockage here. We have to sh really shake whatever um, image that you have of a spiritual person. It's okay for you to stand out in the in the spotlight. It doesn't make you, um, you know, arrogant or narcissistic or anything to like really put out what you know, especially this energy, please. Um, and as a matter of fact, I feel like you guys have had to be really convinced of, of, of that. So to be able to unlock that, right? And so as you unlock this power for yourself, everybody around you is going to benefit. A rising tide lifts all boats. Um, the reason is we have um, friendship with animals, communication with, na with nature spirits. You guys understand a lot of things about, um, you understand a lot about a lot. And then your shadow attribute, we have the tendency to abuse animals, people, and the environment. So that's, that's who's going to step into the void. Do you know what I'm saying? So if we go back to like this verse in the Tao that explains like when you, when the Tao is in the empire, then the dark forces cannot live. It's because it's trying not to create a power vacuum. This space has been reserved for you. You've been anointed by the mother, right? Mother, mother nature. So you guys might be um, really close with nature and you really rejuvenate in nature. You like to be alone. You like to be under the stars, you know, that kind of a thing. And so being out on the internet and the, in the spotlight might not be your cup of tea, but I'm telling you, if you guys can step up, if you can, if you can do that in some kind of a way, um, everybody's going to benefit because what the universe wants you to step up in too is king. You have the sun, you have, so you have three major arcanas. You have the hermit, the world, and the sun. Okay. Um, light attribute, enlightened, benevolent leadership, befitting those in your charge. And then we have the shadow attribute, excessive feelings of entitlement, rulership without restraint. Basically, if you guys didn't have this restraint around leadership, if you weren't thinking about this so deeply, you'd be just like everybody else. Just all they want is the leadership position. All they want is to be out in the spotlight. Look at me. Look at me. You guys don't want that. You want truth to prevail. You guys are smart. First of all, smart, smart, smart. Um, and that's why the universe is like, no, that is being a leader. You know, wolves, the alpha leads from the back. So it's almost like that's why you've been chosen is because you're comfortable without it. You're not, you don't want the trappings. You want to fulfill like what being a true leader is. Also, you are not, um, you're not confused about what exactly that means. You know, there's uh, Eleanor Roosevelt, rights and responsibilities, um, there's certain people want all the rights and entitlements of like being some kind of leader, being in some kind of position of power with the sun here, but there are responsibilities. You think a lot about the responsibilities and that's why this is important for you to do. Um, and that's why your spirit will grow through accepting, accepting this challenge. And it is a challenge because it's going to take from you and you know it, but, um, and that's why sacrifice to, to, to it means to make sacred. So there is something here where you might be sacrificing a little bit of your alone time. Um, 
and maybe some defense mechanisms you really um you're really it's like time to confront a certain defense mechanism um and that's what i'm really getting here so um that is what i have for you guys pile number two this was an amazing read thank you so much for letting me read this i really hope that you'll consider stepping out some of you guys might be thinking about like doing tarot or um starting a youtube channel or something it's not guaranteed success i think you guys this pile doesn't need to be told that um but and and success of course means something for for everybody means a little something different but i feel like it's telling you basically that it's time to pull you can step out of your um of your walls like the person who's going to make you feel safe is you so um thank you guys for watching if that resonated please like comment and subscribe to my channel bye guys wants to come through for you guys is that you have really listen I just said I wasn't gonna forget to read your Tao verse but let me just say this and then we'll get that up. we'll get there um, there is some kind of a change some kind of a cycle that wants to wrap up for you one second okay so um, okay so that ties in really beautiful with what I'm already seeing because there was a mention of timing there. We have the wheel of fortune. So there is something in your life that is about to come to a close unless it already has. Like you have, are definitely closing down a cycle. Um, this could have something to do with like more of a patriarchal figure with the king of wands here. Um, I feel like for a lot of you guys, you have been stuck in a situation. It's been a functioning dysfunction. Um, you've been doing this for quite a while and it's just not serving you anymore. Actually, it's causing you guys a lot of anxiety. Now, I feel like the wind is coming to pick up, okay? So um, there's a time coming that you have manifested for yourself um, with the Wheel of Fortune here that is going to be a strong shakeup and it's going to allow you to break free from this very entrenched energy that I feel like you guys have been a part of. Some of you guys might be mothers, um, and uh, maybe you're even married, you're considering leaving this relationship. It wants you to think about your own happiness, you guys, and to reconsider what abundance is. Because some of you guys might be staying in a situation for like the assets or for the children or for um, the, like, the stability, maybe have a business with someone. I feel like if you're with someone, it's like this king of wands person, very like domineering person. They're very charismatic. They're out in the public eye in some way. And they're really good at... Um, getting people's like symphony, symphony, <laughs> sympathy, maybe they're very musical. Um, you know, the, this is Leo and that's a very theatrical kind of a sign, very romantic. Um, now maybe even this person wants to make some kind of a change that you're not necessarily comfortable with. So the time is coming though for the wheel to turn and, um, the wheel of fortune is oftentimes connected with like the the patriarchy as well like they used to sacrifice horses instead of the kings um to the goddess they used to do that once a year just so people wouldn't get too much on their high horse i feel like you guys are dealing with someone who's very much up on their high horse um and what this doesn't have to be a romantic partner it could be like a boss or something like that and you guys could be staying at a job where you feel like you want to leave you know but you've been there for a long time maybe you guys are approaching some kind of retirement but your advice here is to think about your own happiness. You also have the 10 of cups coming out for, um, you know, what spirit, what spirit is wanting you to focus on and why? Like absolute joy as abundance, right? And I think of pentacles as like assets and things like a house or something. And then I think about water as cash and money. So there could be like, if you guys had to leave someone, there could be a sale of a house or something and you would get half of that and it would be in the form of money. Um, and then there's some kind of, remember it said, be like water. Hold on. The best way to live is to be like water for water benefits all things. So there's something here that's like every, it's not like water. It's like money has condensed into some kind of assets and it's keeping you stuck. And so there could be some kind of benefit from you selling an asset and getting the money instead right now. Whatever this is, like it does cause, like what some of you guys, this is an asset. Maybe you're thinking about moving, like you're thinking about selling your house and moving away um, because you are wanting to go on an adventure. Maybe you're wanting to start your own business. Oh, some of you guys could sell like a, an asset. You could get the money to start your own business. 
and the wheel is going to turn into in your favor in regards to that. But you, it's wanting you to leave something that's no longer serving you. Pile number three, in order to get your fulfillment, the Ten of Cups here. Why? Like, okay, so the the the. I can't speak. <laughs> um, the universe wants you to focus on the Six of Swords. Okay, leaving a situation that has gone on for too long, it's not, it's no longer serving you. You're still gonna have some, like if you leave this situation, you're still gonna have some thoughts, you're still gonna have a little bit of like, was that the thing that I should have done? Um, and that's okay, that's completely normal. But why does it want you to focus on that? Your ultimate happiness. Your ultimate happiness. And viewing that as the currency of the gods is what I wanna say. You know, um, that is the measure of true happiness. It's like your spiritual health, your monetary health there is something here about about the way that you could use your money you have the nine of cups and the ten of cups you guys have been sacrificing and compromising your happiness in order to keep something afloat here okay but you have this spark of an idea with the page of wands and some of you there's children involved you guys have an idea that you want to bring to fruition you're just stuck you're stuck because of a house because of some contract something really really heavy and you've been very successful in whatever this is that you have done but you you have a lot to give and it's calling your attention to that you guys there's a new beginning there's a new beginning but it's requiring the crumbling of your old foundations that's what like that's what the message of this is so be like water allow okay just allow and think of your own happiness it goes to the lowest of places so some of you guys maybe you feel that you're in a high place right now and then it provides you certain protections or something but it's saying don't be afraid to go to the lowest of places okay that's what it's saying um interesting is there anything else that i want to hmm. there's something about travel and culture and the beast becoming man um with the sagittarius energy you guys could have some fire in your chart um some of you guys, it's like you 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 have someone in your life, like a mother figure or somebody that you are providing some kind of care for. You don't want to leave them, but you need to leave them for your own spiritual well being, kind of a thing. Um, I don't know why I picked that up. Let me um, get some more cards here. Rest of Avenger. Desire to balance the scales of justice, righteousness on behalf of society or oneself. I feel like the, there's a desire to balance the scales. You're in a situation that's not serving you for some reason here. Just saw shapeshifter. Um, okay, you guys. So what what is like the blockage here? We have angel. Some of you guys, you've been giving and giving and giving to the situation, but it's actually been vampiric. So angel, helping those in need with no expectation of return of of return. Okay, shadow attribute, acting innocent or angelic to mislead others, falsely claiming to be in touch with angelic guidance. Some of you guys, I feel like you're dealing with that type of a person, like that, that shadow side of angel, where someone has been acting more angelic, but they're really vampiric. They're stealing from you. Someone could be stealing from you. And you might be coming aware of this with the Wheel of Fortune. Someone is like a charlatan. Like, um, they've been using their, like, charisma to try to get to your money or something. So the reason, so this is a blockage. Um, how do you overcome this blockage? We have the vampire. Makes you aware that someone or something's draining your life force. Something's draining you here and it's not okay with spirit. You know, and giving in with no expectation of return, you know, that's been quite a theme in these readings, but it's like we can't give from an empty cup kind of a thing. And that's what I feel like this reading has really been trying to highlight for you uh, is that we yeah we can't give from an empty cup and so um, the universe doesn't want to just like keep hurting you yeah and this is a way I feel like you're almost sabotaging yourself right light attribute highlights your fear of self-empowerment and the changes it would bring to your life 
So this is about you guys staying in some kind of situation that is not serving you. It's draining your life force. It's a functioning dysfunction. Uh, maybe it has even led to some kind of addiction, um, coping mechanism here that has gone on too long for some of you. It could be drinking. We do have that, um, that coming through. But the universe is ready to offer you a new beginning, but it needs you to take the first step. You guys have been getting messages and downloads. Um, and it's saying like, really all you need to do is trust like your happiness, follow your joy. Some of you guys might want to read Eat, Play, Eat, Pray, Love, you know, where she just, her life really isn't working for her. She's trying to do all the things and, you know, she, she's, she's trying to do, she's living from the outside in, but I feel like this is wanting you actually to lead from the inside out, like live your life from the inside out, right? Um, because there's some way that I feel like someone in your life is manipulating you. Um, and this doesn't even have to be a person for some of you guys. I, I don't want, like, this is an organization. This is a boss. This is somebody you work for, you know, and they're trying to get you to stick along because they're saying you're doing all these like really amazing things for, for people, but it's like, you're not getting anything back. Um, this was a theme in pile number two, where it was like thinking about a spiritual person is someone who just gives and gives and gives and never really thinks about themselves. But that's how you get in this vampire trap. It's okay for you to have teeth. Vampires have teeth. Um, also getting some sun, getting vitamin D. I'm not a medical professional. Just want to throw that out there. But, um, with this vampire, I saw this joke. This is where this is coming from. Just so you know, I saw this joke that was like, you know, oh my gosh, this is perfect. This is a perfect analogy. I saw this joke and it was like, you know, vampires just suck your blood because they can't go out in the sun. They can't get the vitamin D that they need. And it's really selfish of you to deny them that. That's like the kind of argument that you guys, somebody's trying to pull over your eyes like how dare you not let me suck your blood um your very life force you guys are being drained of energy okay I'm literally seeing like you know when someone catches a deer and they've got to like drain the blood like you have to hang it from the tree um that's what I'm getting is like that literally draining draining your life force to mount you on a wall because I feel like you guys have value and you guys are naturally nurturing you have a lot of abundance that people possibly want Okay, so yeah, um, and uh, Saboteur highlights your fear of self empowerment, the changes it would bring to your life. For a second, I thought I forgot what um, placement that was in, but somebody is trying to undermine you with the shadow attribute, um, induce a self destructive behavior, and the desire to undermine others. It might actually, hi, Phil, you want to meow for the people? No, he only does that at dinner time. Um, so yeah, like there's somebody here. I think you're going to find out that they're less well-intentioned than you thought. Like that they were trying, they're, this is like a salesman energy, but it's like what they're selling. And there could be someone trying to get a hold of an asset that you have. I feel like you guys are dealing with a bit of a swindler energy and it doesn't have to just be one person, like I said. Um... But it is time for the wheel to turn is what the universe wants you to know for your own happiness, for your own change in fortune, for you to take control of your life. Um, and you guys, I feel like what it wants to say is that you have enough resources to be able to shift your, where you're in, where you're putting your resources right now and really make something big happen for you. And the universe wants, wants you to know that you guys have been leaking life force. I'm laughing because someone, never mind. I used to live at like this hippie place and some, we had a big lightning storm and someone, like my friend who was a jerk was like messing with me. He was like, you're leaking life force. And I was like, what? He was like, I'm kidding. But that's a rude thing to say to someone. Okay. So, um, hero, heroine, passion of, for a journey of serve, a personal empowerment. So I feel like this is, um, it's like getting the juice getting the stamina to be like the own your own hero or heroine there is a mountain to climb you guys if you're single and you're waiting you guys oh my gosh so if you're single and ready to mingle and you want to know if there's someone coming into your life there's something here there's an asset here you guys staying in the same place I feel like you need to get out of like your hometown or wherever it is that you're at sell your assets um not all of them okay just make your own life decisions but what I'm seeing here is like there's some kind of asset that's like a you know, like when the pirates 
wrap like a chain around someone, it's that's what it's doing. It's like causing you to sink, you know. Um, so if you can cut that rope, um, I know I'm switching from chains to ropes and the analogy is like all over the place, but I feel like you guys get what I'm saying. There's something here that's holding you down and it's just stealing your life energy. It's causing you to drown um, metaphorically. And you guys, the universe wants to change all of that. And if you're wondering, there is somebody really great coming in for you. Um, but you have to take some kind of step for that. The king of wands, you guys, there's someone really like charismatic, sexy, successful, entrepreneurial, maybe somebody you want to fund um, with your new assets and go into business with. This would be a great business partnership. There's somebody who's the face. There's somebody who's the stable um, one here. So... Yeah. Also, you guys are, if you don't think that you're beautiful, this is something that I just feel called to say. If you guys don't feel like you're beautiful, you are. Um, very. Some of you guys have a, like a under, like a very muted, very natural kind of earthy beauty about you. Um, that I, I don't know, for some of you, I feel like you're just not maybe aware of or acknowledging in some way. So yeah. And if you guys want to make this meditation part of your, uh, or this first part of like your daily meditation, it is the Tao Te Ching verse eight. The best way to live is to be like water for water benefits all things and goes against none of them. It provides for all people and even cleanses those places a man is loath to go. In this way, it is just like the Tao. Live in accordance with the nature of things. Build your house on solid ground. Keep your mind still. When giving, be kind. When speaking, be truthful. When ruling, be just. When working, be one-pointed. When acting, remember, timing is everything. And I feel like some of you guys are getting like an inkling on this now and you're putting together some kind of a plan and you're going to have some kind of an opportunity that you're going to need to like be able to jump on. So again, if you're selling an asset, somebody's going to make an offer. You might make a low offer. Oh, or you could rent. Okay, you might get more than one offer. I'm not really sure. That's not what this reading is about. <laughs> um, I just, yeah, I don't know. Oh, some of you guys, maybe it's like you don't want to sell whatever asset this is. You could rent it out. And that way you could always, it's like a bit of a safety net. Okay. Anyways, um, one who lives in accordance with nature does not go against the way of things. He moves in harmony with the present moment, always knowing the truth of just what to do. So it's like, it's telling you to get in touch with your spirituality, live in that present moment. You will always know whatever it is. I feel like there's a part of you that you've been really denying. You've been really been struggling with and making some serious compromises and it maybe is affecting your health. Um, you have two nines here. So, um, Okay, that is what I have for you guys. Um, yeah, if that resonated, please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know in the comments, and bye.